Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening out there in YouTube land and around the world. Uh, here we are represented in uh, Canada and South Korea, and so that is uh, about as far opposite uh, side of the world that we could be on. We are in the morning in Canada, and Suji's in the night. <laughs> so, so welcome to our study of praising God through prayer and worship. And uh, we are going to get started. We are on page uh, 82 in the book. We are going to be looking at Psalms 52 and 53 in one day. So hopefully they're really short. Ah, yeah, they're both very short. <laughs> Let's go to prayer first. Thank you, Lord, for the great morning, evening, afternoon that you've given us today to uh Praise your name to be thankful for all the goodness that you've given to us. I'm so thankful, Lord, for friendships all around the world and for like-minded people that you send to study your word together. We want to be women of honor and women that serve you with our whole hearts. We want to present to you hearts of wisdom so that we can guide our families and be of service to you in our communities. You've called us to these homes and these people that uh, we are in, and we thank you for them. We thank you for our families. We thank you for the food that you put on our table and the occupations that you have given us to do, to, um, to be crafty or to care for animals and birds and the things that we do. And so, Father God, now as we look at Psalm 52 and 53, I'm just asking you, you to uh, teach us a lesson today to give us something to hold on to for our hearts for the day and for the coming weeks. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. Um, okay, so I'm going to get Adrienne to read in the New American Standard Version. I can make sure I've got my view on correctly. Good. Okay, good. All right, you're, anytime you're ready. So we're just going to read without marking first. For the choir director, the mask of David, when Doeg, the Edomite, came and told Saul and said to him, David has come to the house of Abimelech. Abimelech. <clears throat> Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The loving kindness of God endures all day long. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor or worker of deceit. You love evil more than good, falsehood more than speaking what is right. You love all words that devour, O oh, deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch you up and tear you away from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living, Selah. The righteous will see him fear. And will laugh at him, saying, Behold the man who would not make God his refuge, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and was strong in his evil desire. But as for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks forever, because you have done it. And I will wait on your name, for it is good in the presence of your godly ones." Well, first reading, what do we, what, what are your first impressions of this one? First impressions? I'm not sure. Well, who does it appear to be talking to? Um, first one a mighty man mm -hmm. a mighty man what is that mighty man doing boasting in evil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's he using first two um tongue his tongue yeah so this yeah. person is speaking all kinds of destruction okay boasting all right let's go through our marking did you see anything before we go on there suji anything that you thought of as just as we did the first read 
Um, thought of what? Any overall impression that, sorry about the motorcycle. Um, overall impression. Um, I don't know. Okay, it's all, it's all right. It's okay because we're going to go into it Sorry. in depth now. We're going to mark it. And just sometimes, you know, we get we read the whole thing and we get an impression of what what the mood of the person is, for example, who's writing it and what kind of things he's facing. And mm -hmm. so um, I think probably we see that there's a contrast in here. There, there's a couple of contrasts. And uh, as I've said before, probably not when you've been in the room, Suji, but every time I see the words, but God, I mark them specially. Like I really highlight that, but God, mm. because throughout the Bible, there's a lot of uh, uh, things that we're told that God interve intervenes and how his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and how he often contradicts what human beings are trying to accomplish through wickedness particularly anyway so that's what i saw i saw there was a but god and but as for me so it talks about this wicked guy and then it talks about god and then it talks about us but as for me <laughs> but let's go in through and mark it okay so so we're going to be marking i guess okay. here uh, an eve evil and all of that and then we're going to be marking God. Loving kindness. Loving kindness. Okay, let's go. Tongue. Why do you boast in evil? Evil. Oh, mighty man. Oh, mighty man. The loving kindness. Okay, so how does that read in your text? It sounds different in yours. Suji, uh, verse one is why do you boast of evil? You my demand. Yeah. Why do you boast all day long? You who are a disgrace in the eyes of God. Oh, okay, so it's a little bit different. So, um, does it have anything about the mercies of God in your version? I should pull yours up. Yours is NIV. In, in verse one. Yeah. Yes. It, this is yes, and I NIV. So in verse one, yeah, there's no about mercy. Okay. It says, you who are disgraced in the eyes of God. Oh, okay. All right. So that reads a little differently here because in ours, it says the loving kindness of God endures all day long. So time phrase. Yeah, time phrase. So all day long. One, one of the things that we also mark in, in our markings is time phrases. And all day long, I just mark it in, I'm in the in the color I do. But I put a little clock that has to do with time. Sometimes my clock looks like a Mickey Mouse with ears, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I do. Okay. And and Tom. so your version. So hang on a second, Adrian, because the NIV reads quite a bit differently. So it's talking about the still talking about the mighty man, and our version is talking about the loving kindness of God, which endures all day long. So that's just a difference in translation. Not sure how that works. And uh, next time I will put an NIV Bible up next to me so that I can um, I can read along that way. Okay. So sorry, Adrian. Can you go on a little farther? Verse two. Yeah, your tongue. Oh, yeah, and we were marking that, too. We were marking that like a mouth. Yes. Your tongue, because the Bible has a lot to say about words and speech and tongue. Okay. Devises destruction, like a sharp razor, a worker of deceit. Okay, so now, the, where, however you marked evil... Um, devising destruction is also, de that's devising evil. So it's not the same word, but it's, it's not the same word meaning definition, but I mark it the same because it's not good. <laughs> no. 
and O worker of deceit. So <clears throat> deceit is the opposite of truth, which I mark, I mark truth in a particular way. And then I put a black box around it when it's deceit, because that's the opposite. And this is a person who's doing that. So that's a wicked person. Okay. First, uh, you, three. you love mm -hmm. evil, evil, mm -hmm. more than good falsehood and i wasn't sure if i should we should mark that well i did the same way as so falsehood is the opposite of truth okay more than speaking what is right so right and righteousness oh, we can yes. mark the same way thank you You love word, all words that devour. I boxed oh, that. Deceitful. Yeah, I marked that. Right. Like, yeah, evil. Oh, deceitful one. T oh, oh, deceitful what? Tongue. Yeah, so there it is again. That's a repeated word. But God. There it is. Oh, now God. I have to mark God. Sorry. We'll break you down forever. You is the person that was in the first paragraph there. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so on forever, I make that infinity sign, which is, which is the uh, eight lying on its side. Mm-hmm. He will snatch you up and tear you away from your tent. Who is he? God. Okay. But. Yep. And who is the use? The evil ones. Okay. He will snatch you up and tear you. Away from your tent and uh uproot you from the land of the living okay so that you is also the same yes okay okay so now the land of the living from the land uproot you from the land of the living that's a poetic term and we remember that the psalms are songs and poems so that what's so what does uproot you from the land of the living mean kill you yeah. Um. Okay. Uproot you from the land of the living. Okay, so now. The righteous. Okay, righteous we're marking in our way. We'll see and fear. And we mark that fear. That's a holy fear. And we'll laugh at him saying. Him who? Him, evil one. Mm-hmm. I always get those confused. Behold the man who would not make God his refuge. Okay, so I don't know. In mine, I kind of underline that whole phrase because that's the wicked person. That's describing the wicked person. Oh, his. I forgot that. Hmm. There it is. And we're marking refuge in a particular way. It's we, like um, in the Psalms, we find a lot of this word refuge. Refuge is a place to hide and be safe. And I just mark it with a tent over top of it. Okay, behold the man who would not make the make God his refuge, but... But trusted in the abundance of his mm -hmm. riches. Okay, riches. Uh, yeah, I'm marking that with a dollar sign. Okay. And was strong in his his you evil. Talk, yeah, his evil desire. Yeah. <clears throat> But as for me, I so am like a 
Yeah, so so we had but God in verse 5, and now we have but as for me. So that's another but. I'm going to mark that a different way than I marked the other one. <clears throat> I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. Another time frame. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I will give you, give you, sorry. Thanks forever, which is a time phrase. Mm -hmm. Because you have done it. And I will wait on your name. For it is good in the presence of your godly ones. Okay, so there's, the, for me again, there it is again, that thing I puzzled through my whole life. Uh, the name of the Lord, and it says your name. And then I would say, what is your name? Oh, I just went out of focus, sorry. How, what is your name? And God's name is good, so that's what it is. Good. God is good. It's his name. Good. And in the presence of his godly ones. Let me see what it says in the text here. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The setting of this Psalm 52 is <clears throat> 1 Samuel <clears throat> chapters 21 and 22 when Saul was seeking to kill David. David had fled from Saul, and Saul was pursuing David and his men. David went to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest, for help. One of Saul's men, Doeg, the Edomite. Oh, so Saul was trying to kill David, and, and Doeg, that was mentioned at the beginning of this psalm, was Saul's man. <clears throat> He was an Edomite, and he was there and told Saul that David went to Ahimelech for help. So Ahimelech rightly said he was not guilty of conspiring against Saul by helping David. Remember, okay, so his, this is the situation, right? That Saul <clears throat> is the king of Israel. David was anointed to be king, but Saul was appointed king. Um and so this whole time, Saul knows that David is really the one that God chose, and he's jealous and hateful and mentally ill and trying to kill. He's always trying to kill David. So, so if you are conspiring with someone who, go, to go against the king, then that's kind of treason. That is treason. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Ahimelech rightly said he was not guilty of conspiring against Saul by helping David, but Saul rejected this and commanded his men to kill Ahimelech and all the priests at Nob. Saul's guards refused to kill God's priests, fearing the Lord, so Doeg the Edomite carried out the order. So <clears throat> even Saul, King Saul's own men understood that they shouldn't be killing the priests. So this Edomite. Um, Adrian, do you remember who the Edomites were? Not offhand. Do you know who they were, Suji? Edomite? Yeah, the Edomites. Edomite. They're I don't in know. Yeah, they're in history. I think they were the sons of Esau <clears throat> way back in history. Esau was the one who sold his birthright for a pot, and Jacob, his brother, got the, the yes. younger God. Oh, yeah. Isn't that how it works? Isn't that what it was? Esau uh -huh. sold his birthright for a pot of stew. 
and and then <clears throat> the birthright was given to Jacob, who became Israel. Right. And the Edomites had a problem with this the whole time. I thought it, that was the one where Jacob went in with the, the yeah 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 with the hair yes, but but <clears throat> I just went to an earlier story of in that family uh, story. So it was a story of a family, and there was a lot of deception in that family. <clears throat> but still, God chose the ones he chose. Okay. So this psalm is directed at Doeg and those like him. How does David describe? How does he describe this, this uh, Doeg person? Right in verse 1. We talked about this already. Most an evil, he is a mighty man. Mm-hmm. What his about tongue his... devises destruction like a sharp razor, a worker of deceit. Mm -hmm. Loves evil more than good. Paul said more than speaking was right. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a pretty uh, bad talker. <coughs> he's a liar and a cheat. <coughs> and a destructive person. Sorry about the coughing. Okay, so what does David say that God's going to do. Break him down forever. Yep, what else? Snatch him up and tear him away from his tent. Ooh. And uproot him from the land of the living. That, yeah. And then what's going to happen when when people when God's people see that happening? What's going to happen? They will laugh, see, and fear, and laugh at him, saying, "Behold, the man who would not make God his refuge, mm -hmm. trusted in the abundance of his riches." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has any application to what's going, what we live in in our day, in our time? I think so. It seems pretty, it seems to me in this world that there are some pretty mighty people who have a lot to say and a lot of power and control over people like you and me and our families. And they control our lives and they tell us what we may do and what we may not do. Some of those things may be all right according to God and some of those things may be things that God really loathes, hates. We see a lot of this, people trusting in the abundance of their riches to, to pull about their plots. But what do we know about God but God? But God will break you down forever. Mm -hmm. God is very serious about his the people that he has anointed, that he has appointed, that he has... Um, that he has protected and uh, cherished. And he has very, uh, uh, very strong things to say about the people who oppose and destroy those, his people. What does he say about himself? He says he's like an olive tree. Growing where? He's flourishing in the house of God. Yes. So this, I read this when, when I, as Adrian was reading this the first time, I was thinking, this is wonderful. We flourish in the house of God. We flourish. These people do these things, but we flourish. I was thinking about that the other day. I had to go to Toronto on, what day was it, Adrian? Saturday. I had to go and get a COVID test for a job for this job. And I was fretting about it a little bit because I don't, you know, when you have a test, you never know what's going to happen. But of course it came back negative. I really, you know, I keep telling people I haven't been anywhere, haven't done anything. I haven't been sick. I haven't been around anyone who's sick. Why should I be afraid if my test is positive or negative? Of course it's going to be negative. <laughs> I'm protected by the power of God, and so are we all who trust in him. As for me, I'm like a green olive tree in the house of God. 
and why? Suji in verse eight. Um, because God is, God gives an unfailing love to us forever and ever. Yes, and we can trust him. And we trust, yes. Mm -hmm. So how does this psalm end then? Um, he will praise God forever for what he has done in his name and he will hope for God's name is good and he will praise God in the presence of God's saints. Mm -hmm. So we just had Thanksgiving weekend here and you just had Thanksgiving how long? Two weeks ago now, Suji? It was like three, three weeks ago. Oh, okay. So both of us in our different countries have just gone, th have just held our Thanksgiving uh, celebrations. <clears throat> and uh, I can be thankful for so many things. And I'm sure that each of you can too. But we can be thanks. We can be thankful for God because we can see in history, in the book of Psalms, we see history, the things that God has already done for his people. We can, we can read the whole Bible with thanks for the things that God has done for his people. And we can know and trust this. He will do great things for his people. He continues to do great things for us. So <clears throat> we don't have to live in unhappiness and fear. We just look for the good things that God is doing. And be thankful. Okay, let's look at <clears throat> if we were going to, but first, but if we were going to title this psalm, because I don't think we did this last time with the other psalm. No, uh, we did not. Uh, how it will, we'll do that later in our life. Uh, and this one, how, how would we, okay, so when we're going to, you probably have a title written in your NIV Suji, because I think the NIV does that. Our study Bibles don't put titles or um, paragraph titles. Themes or whatever. Yeah. So we have to look for them ourselves, and we write them in in our spot in the where it's given <clears throat> in our Bibles in pencil in case we change our minds. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, we and the way we do that is we choose words or ideas from that text. You'd go first, Adrienne, because I have an idea and I don't want to squash yours. I'm, I'm, I'm just reading through it really quick. This is actually a psalm. Of, if you look, think about it, it's a psalm of thanksgiving at the end. Mm -hmm. When you think about it. Mm -hmm. So we could write Thanksgiving. For. For not Ford. Thanksgiving for what? <clears throat> Safety. Mm, is safety in there? No, but I, I was just thinking that's basically what he is. But that's not what I'm looking for. Thanksgiving for being in God's presence. Okay. Could do that. I'm putting goodness because good and goodness are kind of mentioned a couple of times. Oh, wait for your name for it is good. <clears throat> Doesn't really matter. You can change it afterwards. It's uh, so when we put our titles down here in our Bibles, it's so that we um, when sometimes we have to go and sometimes we're in a place of uncertainty or um, unrest inside our hearts, and so we want to find a place that we have studied <clears throat> that speaks to that. So when we title it, we want to be able to go back in our own Bibles and say, this is where I found it and, and got comfort because it's for our comfort and for to keep us, you know, um, 
encouraged and on the right path. Ah, well, I think that's good enough. You can think about it. What does your title does you does your text have a title on it, Suji? Um, title you mean before the first verse? Yeah. yeah. Does, does it does it have a theme? Or, for... Um. Well, actually, it, it, I don't think this is title. It's just uh, it says, uh, for example, chapter fifty two. Before, before first verse, it says, for the director of music, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a masculine of David, mm -hmm. when, uh, what is it, D-O-E-G, Doeg, Doeg, yeah. Doeg, the Edomite, yeah. had, had gone to Saul and told him, David has gone to the house of Ahimelech, Mm -hmm. That's what he says. Yeah, so that so that that is actually a direction. That's not a yes, title. I that's a direction. So. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have see a title. So it doesn't. So yours doesn't have. That's okay. Some some versions do. They they say something. But this is a direction from the person who wrote it as to the purpose for its use. So it this is a song for the choir. And it, a mascal, I think it's a type. Didn't we discover, Adrian, that's a kind of song? Yes, it is. It's a, it's a type of song. And then it, it, then it tells about what, what the song was about. Because in the, in the text itself, it doesn't actually name anybody, right? It just says, oh, mighty one, oh, mighty man. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, so this is a song that's supposed to have been sung in the style of a mascal, I guess. So it's not a waltz. <laughs> not a rock tune. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, good. And those silas that are in there, those are pauses for an interlude. So they might have a little musical interlude, maybe a flute solo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go on now to uh, Psalm 53. Okay. Where's the choir director? According to my... Mahala, <laughs> a masculine of David. Mm -hmm. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have committed an abominable injustice. There is no one who does good. God has looked down from the heaven upon the sons of men to see if there's anyone who understands, who seeks after God. Every one of them <clears throat> has turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Have the workers of wickedness no knowledge, who eat up my people as though they ate bread, and have not called upon God. There they were in great fear, where no fear had been. But for God scattered the bones of him who encamped against you. You put them to shame because God had rejected them. Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his captive people, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. Excellent. Good. So we studied this verse, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. When we were studying foolproofing your life. And uh, that's a. It, it's a very serious thing in God's eye to call someone a fool. And we are warned not to call people fools. But God calls certain kinds of people, certain not kinds of people, but certain people he calls fools. And they have several characteristics. And when we were doing that study, we learned how that we deal with people who fall under the category of fool. Yes, you don't argue with them. No, I don't argue with fools or children. <laughs> you never win. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so so the, the characteristic, the first characteristic of a fool is that. He is, they are corrupt. Before that. Oh, there is no God. Yeah, they say in their heart, there is no God. So. 
this goes back to Romans chapter three, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which we have studied. Okay, good. Yes. All right, let's read. Um, at, the, at the end of this psalm, to me, it seems like it's divided into half from verses one to three and then verse four. Yeah. At the end. But I wanted to say something. Okay, so there is no one who does good, not even one. Romans 3, is that what you said, right? No, what was the first the first verse, first oh, yes. word, verse one is yeah. Romans 3, verse 10. Okay. And then B. Uh, yeah, Romans 3, 12. But the, no one who does good, not that's from Isaiah, I think. Yeah, but I is. say, but I say that Isaiah is much after uh, the Psalms writing. But anyway, yeah. So what about the end of this? Um, it says that God restores His captive people. Hmm. Has He done it at this point in the Psalm? Not that I can see. Because he's saying, oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. Yes. Now, didn't we just study that? Didn't we look at that? What did we look at that? We've been looking at Zion in uh, Psalm 51. We did. We had that last time, I think. And then we were taught in Psalm 50. We were talking about Zion. Yes. Yes. And uh, Psalm 48 is talking about Zion. I think that that's kind of the first that we s saw this. Okay, so in our world, in our common parlance, there's a great deal of negativity applied towards the name or turn, term Zion. And I, I, I want to just beg of our listeners, our viewers here on YouTube, that we're just going to look at the scripture. We're not going to look at the negative things that are spoken in the world currently. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. So let's go and let's examine this closer. Okay, the fool has said where? In his heart. Okay, so there's a heart. You want to mark that a black heart or a? Um, well, I don't know. Just mark out a heart and then you can come and decide that later. There is no God. Okay. They are corrupt. They so, so that whole thing. They are corrupt. I I mark that whole thing as we mark that. And have committed abominable injustice. So injustice is the opposite of justice, and we are we mark justice in a particular way. Yes, and I can't remember how I marked injustice. <clears throat> And I mark this have committed abominable. I abominable. I mark that like wickedness, sin. Okay. <laughs> there is no one who does good. Mm -hmm. God. has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there is anyone who understands, who seeks after God. Every one of them has turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. Become corrupt is that, yeah. There is no one who does good, not even one. So I was marking good, kind of like I was marking righteous, does good. I know it's different, but, uh, you know, 
So there's this contrast right there that we see between good and abominable injustice, corrupt. Have the workers of wickedness. The workers of wickedness. I marked that whole thing. Yeah, I did too. No knowledge. Who eat up my people as though they ate bread. And that's who, not. Who, who? Who. Yeah, who. Um, and the... uh, my people, people. So um, because this is the days of David, I'm marking this like um, Israel. And so okay. I just do that simply with the Star of David. Even though in today's world we can discover that has different connotations, it's just a way for me to see it. As though, uh -huh. as though they, the wicked, yes, ate bread. And have not called upon God. Oh, called upon, that's prayer. So I mark that with a cloud in a in purple because that's what I've been doing since the beginning. No, no reason anymore except that's the way I was doing it. There they the, are in the, great fear. Yes. Okay. They. Okay. So fear. Yes. Great fear. We are no fear. have been for God mm -hmm. scattered the bones of him him who him who yeah yeah him who encamped against you encamped, encamped against you yeah uh, against okay so against you that's uh, God's people I would say yes okay you put them you God's people Yes. Put them to shame. Because God mm -hmm. had rejected them. Oh, that the salvation. Okay, so yeah, we're marking salvation in a particular way. Of Israel. would come out of Zion. Okay, so Zion, uh, I, I said this before, but I started marking this a long time ago like a little fortress. I marked that like Jerusalem, like a little fortress with uh, kind of rampart things over top of it. When God mm -hmm. restores the, his, is, ooh. Um, I, my mark restores like uh, in uh, like salvation. That's a good one. He is captive people. Let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. Israel. Okay, so Jacob is also Israel. Jacob's name was cha was changed. Okay, so rejoice. I want to. Oh, I forgot about rejoice and be glad. So this is a very, this has a very interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> this one also has whoops this one has some interesting superlatives it's got no one everyone no one not even one those are superlatives that means like <clears throat> it's not like it's not like when our kids tell us Oh, mom, you never let me go there, or you never let me do this, or you always say that. That's not true because we don't never or always do things, but God does. So when it's written in God's word, <clears throat> it means what it means. It's not, it's not uh, what we call hyperbole, like a like a child would say to their parent, "You never let me eat that," or "I always have to do this. It's always my fault," <laughs> whatever it is, right? <clears throat> that's not truth but God's word is <clears throat> okay 
So let me see what it says here in the text. He also marked fools. So, oh, okay. I didn't do that. The fool. I have a special way I mark that. And I don't know why I did that, but I have in my mind <clears throat> a picture of a little chubby baby with one curly hair coming out of its head. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I mark it, <laughs> mark it as okay <clears throat> okay so Psalm 53 oh my goodness now it's asking us uh, Suji will you keep your finger in your plate, place right there because it wants us to go to Psalm 10 and verse 4 and I'd like to hear it out of your version Psalm, Psalm 10, 10 verse 4 And verse 4. Yeah. Verse 4. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Ah. So, so what do we see here? The psalmist has said <clears throat> in chapter 10 that these are wicked people. In chapter 53, he calls them fool. <clears throat> And the point is, is that in their thoughts, there's no God. They're not, they're not, they're not acknowledging God. Very interesting. Spurns the Lord. It also asks us to look at, uh, hey, I want to hear that in your Korean Bible. Have you got your Korean Bible there? Yes. So read verse 4. Uh, chapter 10, verse 4. Yes. 아기는 그 교만한 얼굴로 말하기를 여호와께서 이를 감찰지 아니하신다 하며 그 모든 사상에 하나님이 없다 하나이다. <웃음> I didn't understand that. <웃음> God, God is 하나님. Oh, okay. 하나님. 하나 means one. Oh, 하나. okay. 님 is like sir. So God is the only one. So we call it one sir. Hana. Ah, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> there he yeah, and the fool says there is no God. Okay, go over to 14, chapter 14, and verse 1. Chapter 14, verse 1. Yes. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. There, these are vile. There is no one who does good. Hey, that's exa almost exactly what it says at yes. verse 53. Now, I yes. have to tell you this. I spent seven years reading five Psalms and one proverb every day. Wow. Seven, seven years. So that means I went through these Psalms once every month, and I did not make that connection. <laughs> <clears throat> that there was that repeated thing. Thank you for this study. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what about people? What, what what are they described as, these people who do not believe God? The fools. Say, yeah, they're fools. And what about their, what about what they do? They are they corrupt. They, they say there's no God. And their deeds are vile. Mm. And there's no one who does good. Yeah. So when we look around, we see that there's a lot of this going on. <clears throat> yes. And and so we understand one thing about the people who are doing these vile, abominable, wicked things in our world. And that is they don't think that God is seeing them or watching them or will hold them accountable for what they have done. In the psalm that we read today, <clears throat> it says, well, in Psalm 52, <clears throat> it says that God is going to break them down forever. 
It's going to uproot them. And the righteous will see that and fear. Fear who? Fear what? God. Fear God. Yes, fear God. And we'll laugh at him. Saying, behold, the man who would not make God his refuge, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and was strong in his evil desire. It says also um, <clears throat> in Psalm 53, verses 4 on, what they're doing, they are, they, the workers of iniquity have no knowledge. They eat up God's people as though they ate bread. And have not called upon the Lord. They don't realize, you see, those people do not realize that we are praying. That we are calling upon the Lord who does these great and mighty things for his people. The people who are absolutely acting in wicked with wicked intent towards us do not know God. And they do not know how he answers his people. You put them to shame because God has rejected them. And then it says, oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. This is in the day of David that Psalm 53 is being read. What do we know about the salvation of Israel coming out of Zion? God will save Israel people to come out of Zion? Is that what it means? Well, he will, but he already has. What do you say about that, Adrian? <clears throat> God restored his captive people from Egypt. Um, before David, but um, but God already has uh, has already Israel's salvation is is basically set in stone because God made a covenant with Israel that He would rescue that he, their their uh, um. That they would be part of the remnant, part of the remnant that would go to see Jesus, go to heaven. So, in other words, their their salvation is sure because they are His promised people because He made that covenant, and God's covenant can never be broken That's unless because right. He wouldn't be God if He broke His covenant. So, right. you, will you go to Matthew chapter one in the New Testament? Matthew chapter one. I have to ponder that for a minute. <sighs> and then start at verse 17 and chapter chapter one. Yeah, and verse 17. Start start at 17 and keep on reading. 17. Thus there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Christ. Keep on. Yep, keep going. The, the birth of Jesus Christ. There is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be... Um, married to joseph but before they came together she was found to be with child through the holy spirit because joseph her husband was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace he has he had in mind to divorce her 
quietly, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Yes. When so Joseph... Walk up. Yep. Stop or? Yeah, keep going. Keep going. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. So, did salvation come out of Zion? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Because, okay, so, um, hang on. Go back to 21. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Okay, so who is his people? His people are Israel. And this name Jesus means God saves. So we go back to 52 and, or sorry, 53 and verse 6, and it says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when God restores his captive people. Let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. Okay, so in the time that Jesus came, did most of his people recognize him? No. No, they didn't recognize no. him as the Messiah that God has sent. They could have, and many did, and we are in the family and kingdom of God because of them and because of Jesus. So salvation has come out of Zion. It, it's just that he wasn't recognized by all his people. So that's a, that's a very interesting thing, but we also know he's coming again, and he will be recognized. <clears throat> all right. Okay, what do we learn? Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to another place. Uh, Genesis chapter 6. That's way at the beginning. Genesis chapter 6. And we are looking at verse 5. Okay, so Genesis 6 is where we talk about Noah. <clears throat> but verse 5, what does it say? Can you read for me, Suji, when you got it? The Lord saw how great man's wicked, wickedness on the earth had become, and that every uh, inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. Ah. The Lord was grieved that uh, this is chapter six, uh, um, yep. verse, verse six. six. That was all. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so here the Lord just made the earth and it just came to the, the person of Noah in the times of Noah. And uh, he saw the wickedness of man was great on the earth and everything that was in his heart was evil all the time. Let's, now we're going to flip over to <laughs> Romans in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans 3. And this is, I think, what you were talking about, Adrienne. Romans 3. Yeah, I was. Romans 3, 10. 10 to 12. Okay. 
Actually, you could read uh, verse 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. Roman is in New Testament? Yeah. New Testament? Yeah. Matthew, Mark, yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Ah, uh, Roman. Okay. So, Romans chapter what? Three. Three. And, and verse what? Nine to twelve. Nine to twelve. Um, what shall we conclude then? Are we any better? Not at all. We have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Whew, that's pretty depressing. <laughs> So you see that in Romans, the Apostle Paul is restating what the psalmist said in the psalms that we were reading today. Okay. In verse 6 of, uh, I'm just reading from the text, psalm, back, I'm, now I flip back to Psalm 53. <clears throat> So what do the what do we learn about about humankind from these from the verses that we read in uh, Romans and that human human kinds are all sinners. Yep, we all turn away from God. So that there's a word for that that. Um, <clears throat> It's a word that's used mm, mm, when it talks about the condition of mankind as compared to the holiness of God. And that word is called depravity. Depravity. And the Bible clearly teaches that apart from Christ, we are all depraved. That's a sobering thing to think about. <laughs> okay. So back in Psalm um, 53 and verse 6, it speaks of a time when God restores his captive people. But the you think about this in history. After David, they, the Israelites were taken into captivity by the Assyrians <clears throat> and then the Babylonians. Now the Assyrian people were ferocious, absolutely bloodthirsty unmerciful, show no mercy, conquerors. And uh, when the Israelites went into Babylonish captivity, well, those people were a little bit more, um, let's say, in, they were merchants. And uh, like King Nebuchadnezzar was a Babylonish king. And so he he had a lot of gold. And he built things of gold, and he had a lot of things that he made, like waterways and and gardens and whatnot. Okay, so those Syrian and Assyrian and Babylon Babylonian captivities are way in the future from what, when David is writing this here. So, what do you think verse six refers to, and why? I gave my opinion. <laughs> hey, it doesn't have to be yours. Um, oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when God restores his captive people. Let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. To me, that points back to the to the um, um, <clears throat> to me. My opinion being. Is that points closely to Revelation is when his when he raptures his people. Yeah, you think? Well, to me that that's what it points to to me. 
So you're you're thinking this on, on a heavenly on a heavenly. Well, on on when Jesus comes again, that's when his captive people will be away from the the Muslims, etc. But you you are talking about two separate events, though. Oh, am I? Yeah. Okay. I get confused sometimes. Yeah, yeah, because there are two separate events yet to have come in history. One is the catching away of his believers. Yeah. And the next is the the return and reign of the Christ. So those are two separate events given us in scripture. So then then it would be the <laughs> second event. <laughs> <laughs> that you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah, oh, that the salvation of Israel. Well, if that if if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And we see now that uh for many years, and I have been watching this, um that many of the Jews who have been scattered abroad in various different countries are moving back to Israel. They're they're just doing that. They're thinking to go home. And they've been scattered abroad throughout the whole earth. And sometimes the, the people of Israel have been scattered abroad because God drove them there, or you know, the or because they went because of, you know, trade or whatever, or they just settled down there because of one reason or another. But God is gathering them back together. And, oh, that the salvation of Israel would come out of Zion when God restores his captive people. Let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. So there is a time coming that's yet to come. And uh, we may be the ones who see that. We may be. We may be. Every, every year, we may be, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's for another day and for another study. So what would we say about, uh, if we we're going to put a title on Psalm 53, what would it be? God restores his captive people. Mm -hmm. We could do that. Sure. Yeah, before that, he even he scatters the bones of him who camped against him. God, I'm just going to write what you said. God restores his people. I'm just going to say his people. So we are considered his people. We who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ are considered to be God's people now. Of course, he made every single human being on the earth. But this is a different kind of, of belonging in the family because he's chosen us. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Anything else anybody wants to add to this before we close in prayer? Not that I can think of. Okay. Well, this is a beautiful thought to think of for the next couple of days. <laughs> or however long it is for the YouTube people who are catching up to go along. We just hope that everybody here has been blessed and if if it, if there's been anything in this study um, with which you have um, a concern or a problem, I just encourage you to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to reveal his word to you, to your heart, and to give you understanding. Um, uh, there's no need to fight with us messengers. <laughs> Uh, because really, uh, we're just trying to bring the word of God to the internet and to um, to remind our own hearts of the things that the Lord has said and is doing. And um, we just pray that you're receiving a blessing from this. So let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you you sent your salvation to Zion in the form of Jesus, who is the Word of God, who is the Son of God, who came to deliver people from their sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to give us a future and a hope in your kingdom, Lord. And uh, we know that we don't have to be afraid of the, the scoffers and the mockers 
and the people who declare there is no God. Uh, we can pray for them and we can love them. And some of those precious ones are very close to us and could be living in our own homes. And our heart breaks because we want them to be saved. And so, Father God, we petition you to save those people. Bring them to repentance. Cause them to see who you are and to assess themselves rightly. But, Father God, help us to remain loving and kind and um, and care for those people that you've given to us to care for. And we look forward for a blessed hope in heaven. We look forward to the day you come to rule and reign, that you come out of Zion to rescue your captive people and to uh, cause great rejoicing. But Lord, we also know that in our lives here and now, you have given us the Prince of Peace. You are our peace and that we can live in peace wherever we are because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us and to uh, create in us clean hearts, uh, willing and wanting to serve you. And now in the time that we have, I just pray that you would uh, answer questions for people with your word and that your Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. And I pray and ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say goodbye to our YouTube family out there. We're so glad you've joined with us wherever you've been in the world. And hey, listen, um, for you people who are coming to this as a, as a study that we've already done and you're coming along and watching our YouTube, will you put where you are in, the, in your comment section? Those comments are moderated, uh, but I do get to see them and uh, I will publish those. It would be lovely to know where everybody is in the world who views this throughout time. And uh, we're looking forward to meeting you in heaven too if we don't meet you here on this earth. So <laughs> I'm gonna say bye for now to those people. See you on the flip side.